solutions to your fix and offer a multitude of quality products and services such as steel chainsaws, Yeti coolers, Cub Cadet mowers, case knives, and big green egg grills. In early 2015, Keith Hardware remodeled and added hundreds of new items to better serve their customers. At Keith Hardware, we are proud supporters of all Fort Gibson School events. Go Tigers! Fort Gibson Education Foundation's desire is to help our students receive the best possible education our community can provide. We make every effort to be the highest quality educational system in the state. Donations equal opportunities, opportunities for students and teachers to be their best. An opportunity to build, design, and compete. An opportunity to create, design, and share. An opportunity to encourage, develop, and provide. An opportunity to travel, process, and gain real-world knowledge. An opportunity to honor, celebrate, and inspire. When you donate to our Fort Gibson Education Foundation, 100% of what you donate goes back into our classrooms for students and teachers so we can give them as many opportunities as possible. We are your Fort Gibson Education Foundation. Muskogee Powder Coating, doing projects big and small since 2010. Check us out on Facebook to see our work and give us a call at 918-681-4496. Creating remarkable reactions since 2011, Reaction Wraps has devotedly provided their customers with quality wraps, signs, banners, and other customized graphics. Located behind Fajitaritas on South Scott Street, Reaction Wraps. If you're looking for some local entertainment, look no further than Green Country Lanes located on South York Street in Muskogee, a prime place for open bowling, birthday parties, and glow bowling. Come on out to Green Country Lanes where bowling is a sport for those who have talent to spare. Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory wish to personally invite you and your family to come tour the newest funeral home and the only crematory in Muskogee. Cornerstone welcomes the opportunity to answer any questions regarding planning and pre-arrangements for you and your loved ones. At Cornerstone, you'll find a helpful professional staff and beautiful surroundings. Come experience the difference at Cornerstone Funeral Home, 1830 North York, Muskogee, where you will find faces you know and reputations you trust. The Tiger's Den is located in downtown Fort Gibson. They have t-shirts, sweatshirts, jackets, hoodies, hats, and all kinds of tiger gear in sizes from children to adults. They do screen printing and embroidery, too. Give them a call at 918-478-4873 or stop by 131 South Lee. Renfro Electric has been in business for over 35 years and is a full-service electrical contractor for all of Oklahoma. We are able to serve our customers with superior craftsmanship and top-notch service. With over 40 employees and a bonding capacity in excess of $6 million, we can handle those larger jobs but are still small enough to provide the personal service our customers have come to expect. For any electrical needs, give us a call at 918-687-7535. Keith Hardware and Supply has been located in Fort Gibson, Oklahoma since 1957. 
We strive to find solutions to your fix and offer a multitude of quality products and services such as steel chainsaws, Yeti coolers, Cub Cadet mowers, case knives, and big green egg grills. In early 2015, Keith Hardware remodeled and added hundreds of new items to better serve their customers. At Keith Hardware, we are proud supporters of all Fort Gibson School events. Go Tigers! Fort Gibson Education Foundation's desire is to help our students receive the best possible education our community can provide. We make every effort to be the highest quality educational system in the state. Donations equal opportunities, opportunities for students and teachers to be their best. An opportunity to build, design, and compete. An opportunity to create, design, and share. An opportunity to encourage, develop, and provide. An opportunity to travel, process, and gain real-world knowledge. An opportunity to honor, celebrate, and inspire. When you donate to our Fort Gibson Education Foundation, 100% of what you donate goes back into our classrooms for students and teachers so we can give them as many opportunities as possible. We are your Fort Gibson Education Foundation. And we are back. Gonna get the second half underway. Lady Tigers bring a ton of momentum with them after a huge second period that leaves them with a 28-19 lead. Keys to the second half. Honestly, just doing exactly what they were doing, playing great defense, applying a lot of pressure, um, doing the full court press. Hildell didn't seem to be able to handle it very well. Um, the times they did break it, they scored, but um, they didn't break it every time and we got some easy buckets out of it and then just continue to knock down shots having uh, Jenna Whiteley having your shooter shoot the ball really um, not taking rush shots taking the open shot in rhythm um, and making sure you get a couple passes off down on the offensive end you don't want to dribble up and just rip a three and hope it goes in yeah I mean that's what we saw in the, mostly in the second period, and uh, you guys can see the results right now. Um, they're gonna have to take that into the second half. I think another big part uh, will be shutting down or attempting to, number four, Nevaeh Johnson. She's been having a great game. Uh, got in foul trouble early, but scored all eight points in the second quarter for the Lady Hornets. Wiley, active hands, going to get the ball away early. And here we go, Marion Parks brings the ball up the floor. Nice pass to Taylor in the post. She works her way down. Got to get the foul. That's another key to this half. I feel like we didn't find Taylor enough in the first half. Um, she was really instrumental in the Old Fort Classic and really all season. So I feel like we need to find her just a little bit more. Yeah, she's just so smart. Every time she touches the ball, it seems like she's making a good decision. Um, whether to try and score or to kick it back out. And second free throw is up. And good. Sydney Taylor with a new hit double. Press is back on. There's going to be 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Little pass that goes, you know, a little, a uh, little behind uh, there is just enough, just enough to cause a turnover. Taylor to Parks, good look. It's up and good. Taylor's just such a great passer. Yep, good vision, good feel for the game. Gonna get, get caught a little too high up on the press right there and give up the quick two. Yeah, that's one of those times that the they broke the press, they're able to finish. But I feel like the reward is worth the risk. We've been able to score, stop them, force a lot of turnovers in this press. Three from two shields is no good there. 
Lawrence will take back over. Little skip pass. Little shooter's roll. Hill Dell three. Yep, must be living right. That one goes in. 33-24 lead now. Taylor surveys top of the key, drive two shields, Whiteley. Shooters roll on the other end. A little karma going on right now in the gym. Johnson quarter three. Man, the, sh the shooting. Right now, the past three possessions all ended on three point attempts. I think each team, mm, one miss maybe in the past three or four minutes right now. If you're a fan of offense, it's getting kind of fun to watch. Just a little too hard on the layup there. Number three, that one's gonna be short. Looks like that one was blocked by Addie Whiteley. Yeah, maybe an ill-advised save there from Taylor. It's gonna end up working out, turning into a Fort Gibson travel. Little confusion on the call. Yeah, I think it's out of bounds. Yeah, I think they end up calling a travel there on okay. Jenna Whiteley. It looked like a, a jump ball situation, and they give the travel. Lane Johnson again. I mean, she's having a night. She already has. If I'm calculating correctly in my head. I haven't written it down, but she has 15 of 29 for Hildo, and it may be more. Yeah, at least. Taylor in good position. Not able to finish. Blocked Gets another chance. We'll get fouled there. That first shot was blocked by Johnson. Yeah, and the ball just, I mean, it goes in the right spot, and Taylor's there again. Keeps finding herself in a good position. See the Taylor the line to shoot two. That was first up and no good. Can't make them all. Oh, for two there, a little uncharacteristic. Yeah, all going back to the Hornets. Don't think she had missed one until that first one on that set. Going to be a travel there. Court Gibson going to take over. Here comes Lindsey Fouch in for Feather Two Shields. Going back with the big lineup. Timeout on the court. Charge to Court Gibson. It's going to be a 30 second timeout. Going to take a second to think about this. 30 second timeout uh, called by the Tigers. Get the game plan in order. We'll take a second to uh, read our sponsors. This broadcast is brought to you by Keys Hardware and Supply, Renfro Electric, Fort Gibson Education Foundation, Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory, Green Country Lanes, and Muskogee Skate Center, Muskogee Powder Coating, Tiger's Den, Reaction Wraps, Dr. Debbie Coy and Dr. Kimberly Duraset, The Learning Nest, New Direction Dental and Sleep Care, and Armstrong Bank. Thank you for all that you do for Tiger Vision and Tiger Athletics. Be four minutes remaining in the third. <coughs> Tigers uh, up 36 29 right now. 
a lot tighter game down the stretch than the score of the other one the last time these two teams met. Yeah, and give a lot of credit to Nevaeh Johnson. Really found her rhythm offensively here tonight. Um, and been effective on the defensive end as well. Yeah, and since an early two fouls, she's played really smart as well with and the block there. Yeah, I think we said her name too many times. She made an impact right there, right on cue. That gives a spark to the Hornets who bury a three right after the big block. All the momentum swinging towards the Hornets. Tigers need to find an easy basket in order to stop this run. Yeah, basically a run stopper would be huge for them right now. And they're looking in the post. It's not there. Another opportunity for Hilldale. That's going to be a travel. Travel in violation for Gibson basketball. Number three, Tory Brown back in for Hilldale. Three minutes, the Tigers' lead has now uh, been cut to four. It's like... Interesting call. Taylor must have grabbed the ball early there. I couldn't quite see it's in the corner. It, look, it looked like it was knocked out by the Hilldale player, but maybe the ref saw a slight touch there by Taylor. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Tigers get it right back, though. Pass is intercepted there by Johnson. up and good, 36-34. Even when she had nothing to do with the play, Johnson's the reason they got the layup. Two Tigers committed to covering Johnson and they found the open seam for the layup. That is a huge scramble going on right there. Cheers from the Fort Gibson side. Boos from the Hilldale side. Yeah. It's a rivalry game. That's what you expect. The one call goes the opposite way. Yep, and uh, Fort Gibson is going to take a timeout. They really need to get uh, find that offensive rhythm uh, that they had in the second, uh, survive this run from Hilldale, and get back to work. Yeah, like I've said on the broadcast before, basketball's basically a game of three runs if you can if you can be on the top side of two of those runs you're going to win the game and the tigers need to stop hilldales and then go on their own and try to extend this lead as hilldale has cut it all the way down to two yeah and they really i mean just going here to finish the quarter just got to take care of the ball here uh some unforced errors and some ill-advised passes have kind of put them in a tough spot um, and Hilldale's doing a good job, too, of taking advantage Boys of those opportunities. Yeah, and there's there's been a couple times down the field or down the court where they're just rushing their shots as well, trying to respond to the momentum, and it's just not – the yeah. shots aren't falling if you're not going to get into your offense and move the ball. And here we go. Let's see what adjustments were made by the coaching staffs after that timeout. 2-10 remaining in the third. Tigers lead 36-34. This has been a great tactical battle by the coaches, as you can see, um, or as we can see right here behind the coaches. Both of them are giving their players instructions um, and seeing if they can enact them. Taylor to Fouch. Fouch, quick trigger, and it rolls out. That's kind of in the Tigers' quarter. I mean, that Looked like a good shot. Looked like it was going in, and it just rolls out, and possession's going the other way.
for the carry. Both teams need to settle down now. Seems like turnovers are coming on both sides of the ball. Yeah, and you can look for uh, the intensity to be ratcheted up here in about a minute and a half when the fourth quarter starts. Taylor, that's the bucket they've been looking for. That's the exact spot you don't want to stop on the floor. Yeah, able to survive that encounter there. Getting close to the five second count there. Big step on the crossover move and we'll step out of bounds. Number five, Lexi Barrasso back in for Hildale. Thirty-eight, thirty-four now, forty-eight seconds remaining. Snell, wing three. A little too much. Taylor's there, though. He's going to save the possession. Taylor attacks. I lose it a little short on the glass. It's a great hustle play there by Lindsey Fouch. Yep, going to be a jump ball. The booze rain down <laughs> from the Hildo crowd. Interception, Taylor pushes the ball up the floor. She's going to take it herself. Top pop, and it's good. Sydney Taylor. Big bucket there for the Tigers. Ten seconds remaining in the period. Nevaeh Johnson's been there all night. Big crossover to the hoop and a foul. It's probably a smart foul. Take away the easy two. Make her earn it at the free throw line. You know, and it kind of uh, slows down the momentum too. Even if she gets both points, it's, it's not as big of a momentum play as it could have been. And Tigers also might get an opportunity uh, on the second free throw to maybe push the ball and get a last second heave up. Free throws up, no good. Rebound Taylor. She's going to push it herself to Jenna Whiteley. Three-quarter court shot off the back iron. Looks good for a minute there. Third quarter ends up for Gibson 40. Hildale 35. If you're looking for some local entertainment, look no further than Green Country Lanes located on South York Street in Muskogee, a prime place for open bowling, birthday parties, and glow bowling. Come on out to Green Country Lanes where bowling is a sport for those who have talent to spare. Muskogee Powder Coating, doing projects big and small since 2010. Check us out on Facebook to see our work and give us a call at 918-681-4496. The Tiger's Den is located in downtown Fort Gibson. They have t-shirts, sweatshirts, jackets, hoodies, hats, and all kinds of Tiger gear in sizes from children to adults. They do screen printing and embroidery too. Give them a call at 918-478-4873 or stop by 131 South Lee. This broadcast is brought to you by Keats Hardware and Supply, Renfro Electric, Fort Gibson Education Foundation, Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory, Green Country Lanes and Muskogee Skate Center, Muskogee Powder Coating, The Tigers Did, Reaction Wraps, Dr. Coy and Dr. Duroset, The Learning Nest, New Direction Dental and Sleep Care, and Armstrong Bank. Welcome back here to Harrison Fieldhouse for the fourth quarter between the Fort Gibson Lady Tigers and the Hilda Lady Hornets. It's gearing up to be a good one. Man, it's been exciting. The third period, especially there at the end, it's been back and forth. We've seen the team straight threes, straight layups. 
Slider violation for Gibson basketball. For Gibson's gonna get the ball here, 753 left in the game. Yeah, it's gonna be key to keep our keep their emotions in check, both teams, as this is a rivalry game, both teams want this very badly. Whitely to Whitely. Corner three up. Good. Big shot there from Jenna Whitely. They'll survey, not able to find anything just yet. Get the hand or ball in the hands of Johnson. Corner three. Short. But flying in is number two. Rebound. Not able to find the shot there though. Well, Gibson's doing a good job of keying on Johnson for from Hildale. His Addy Whiteley takes a deep three and drains it. And that's fun to watch back-to-back -back Whiteley threes. Pushes the lead up, 46-35. Great way to start out the fourth quarter here in Fort Gibson. We'll take a minute to list off our sponsors. This broadcast is brought to you by Keys Hardware and Supply, Renfro Electric, Fort Gibson Education Foundation, Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory, Green Country Lanes and Muskogee Skate Center, Muskogee Powder Coating, Tiger's Den, Reaction Wraps, Dr. Debbie Cool and Dr. Kimberly Duraset, The Learning Nest, New Direction Dental and Sleep Care, and Armstrong Banks. Thanks for all that you guys do for Tiger Athletics and Tiger Vision. What's the key down the stretch here for the Tigers? I think uh, we got to shut down number four, Nevaeh Johnson, and we got to keep hitting our open shots. Um, the bigs have been very, I uh, hate to say this, a big part of the, the second half with Fouch and Taylor and using them to get the ball uh, around the court and look for those shooters. Uh, we just saw back-to-back -back Whiteley threes right there uh, to push the lead up. And they just kind of keep playing fast. I think they play better when they're just in their flow, flying around, having fun, um, and putting pressure on other teams, see if they can handle it. Yeah, it was key what you said there, slowing down number four Johnson for Hildale. As the Tigers have keyed on her since very early in this game. This start, since the start of the fourth quarter, they have found some success. As she hasn't been able to score, but she still affects the game in other ways. A lot of pressure right here from the Tigers. They do, or the Hornets find it to Johnson. Good move there, not able to find the finish, and Fouch is there with the rebound. And here they go, they're playing fast. Whiteley, deep three, off the front iron. Gonna be a foul on the rebound. That's on four, Lexi Fouch, Lindsey Fouch. I have her in class every day. Got to be smart now, getting near foul trouble with that third personal. Big head of steam for the Hornets as they push the ball down the floor. Between the legs, crossover step back. Nice move by Barnowski. That is a big time shot. Yeah, she was moving down the floor. And just to pick up the dribble, Snell to Fouch. She finds her spot on the baseline, just a little too strong. But Jenna Whiteley's there with great position for the offensive rebound. They find Snell on the wing. It's up. It's good. Man, that looked good from the get-go. 49-37, Lady Tigers lead. That ball movement is what led to that and an easy turnover there and for Lindsay the Tigers. Lindsey Fouch finds herself with the ball in her hands. It kind of surprised her. She was looking at the, the offense and what they were going to push at her, and all of a sudden the ball's in her lap. She finds Taylor. 
Taylor goes up. Good left, the left hand. 51-37, the Tigers are on a run. Like I said, you gotta be on top of the two of the runs. This seems like the second run for the Tigers, so. It, and it's been a big one so far. If they can finish out. And an it's, unforced error. And she's gonna let some time run off the clock there. It's an odd play. Hildale takes the time out to try to settle the nerves. Yep, Fort Gibson. They're going to look to keep the foot on the gas pedal here. You can hear the crowd getting into it on both sides. Man, it's a great atmosphere. You got the crowd, the cheerleaders, the good music over the PA system. We appreciate you guys watching on Tiger Vision, but man, it's always nice to be at the game too. Yeah, it's something special about being in the building. Appropriate song too over the the PA system, you dropped a bomb on me, man. The start of this fourth period has been just that, an explosive start um, and a huge run. Just under five minutes remaining in the game. Tigers lead 51-37. And it seems like in this game, every time Hildell's had even just a little run, Tigers have responded and been able to put it down quickly. Yeah, something to say too, how you respond in winning time when the pressure's on uh, will either win you or lose you a lot of ball games. Fouch. That one's not even going in. Gonna get called for another foul here. Foul number four, Lindsay Fouch, your fourth person on team foul number three. She's officially in foul trouble. Four fouls, yep. need to play smart. Looks like Hayes is going to be set to check in. Good recovery there from the Tigers after the press is broken. Good pass, good find, and good finish there for the Hornets. See, and that's what foul trouble does for you because Fouch couldn't really contest that with worry of getting her fifth foul. They work the ball to the middle. Find Snell in the corner. Good move to her left. There's Jenna Whiteley with another offensive rebound. She's got at least two or three of those tonight, and two I know for sure in the fourth that have been huge for the Tigers. Good Fouch ball finds movement. Taylor. That block attempt's going to find some hand. Taylor to the line for two. Not really calling it on the block. It looks like he's calling more of a push as she's going up. So it wasn't on the, the block attempt. That was with the offhand. Taylor in her little free throw funk. Going to have to clear the mechanism here. Get back uh, into her rhythm. Nothing going on in the second. Four, Hildale will take over. Big battle on the floor. Going to be a jump ball. Jump ball to Fort Gibson. Goes the way of the Tigers. Addie Wiley slowing it down a little bit, and here they go. Hayes, elbow jumper, no good. Good defense there from Snell. Jump 
Johnson, corner three, up and good. She has a shot that is tough to get in the way of. Uh, she is tall, uh, good wingspan, and she shoots a high arcing jumper. That one finds its way to the bottom of the net. Hayes, bounce pass to Snell. It's a good look. Great setup and a great finish. Snell with the wing three. See, that's what I'm talking about. Every time Hillo gets any kind of momentum, the Tigers have responded. Jenna Whiteley finds herself with the ball in her hands. She's going to go up and draw the foul. First free throws, no good. Second free throw, up and good. Breaks the streak of missed free throws there. Hildo's coach is letting the ref know how he felt about that last call. Yes, I think he just wanted to talk for a second. I'm not sure the ref gave him the time of day, though. No, he did not. <laughs> and that's going to be a travel ball going the other way. Fifty-five, forty-two lead here. Two minutes and twenty seconds remaining in the game. Taylor gets a step. To the paint, a little too strong. I think she was expecting contact, didn't get it, and just kind of forced her off her shot there. Tipped pass, going to be another jump ball. Jump ball to Hilda. Didn't look like anybody really had possession there, but the call had been made. Checking back in, 15 and 14, two shields and parts. Tigers going to a little smaller lineup. Pass to Johnson, she's gonna pull it back out, gonna look for a three, trying to get back into this game. Not able to find anything there, has to get the ball up. She finds the offensive rebound, finds it again. This time it'll go. And one opportunity, minute 41 left of the game. Going to give them a chance to get it back to within 10. See, this is the point where you, you really need that second big in the game because she was able to get the rebound in between some of these smaller guards out there. It is not able to find its way to the bottom of the net. The lead stays at 11. Taylor looking for the ball to initiate the offense here. Parks, three, good. Parks for one, two, three. Johnson for the answer. That one's no good. They kick it back to her. Corner three. That one's good. Leads now 58-47, 52.9 remaining in the fourth. Timeout Hildale. Man, somewhat of a lead here for the Tigers, but Hilldale will not go away just yet. Yeah, 
They, they keep fighting, and their, their coach is slowing down the game, taking this timeout, um, allowing the clock to stop here, and just trying to get back into it, trying to chip away. It's, it does seem like a big deficit to overcome nine points in under a minute, but it's happened before. So, Yeah, I mean, and really when it comes down to it, they're tough three possessions, but it is a, still a three-possession game. Um, very doable if you're the Hornets. The Tigers, on the other hand, are going to look to push the lead uh, and control the final minute of this game. Yeah, this be, got to be smart. Play smart. Listen to their fundamentals. Don't turn the ball over. That's the key. Turnovers are how you get quick points. And don't foul on the defensive end because you have foul, they go to the free throw line. Um, and that will give them points without clock expire or clock going or without the time expiring i can't get it out of my mouth words are hard i mean yeah <laughs> you talk as much as we do you're bound to make a mistake every now and then guys <laughs> i just don't admit mine <laughs> addy whiteley's going to push the ball to the floor and going to get fouled addy whiteley at the line to shoot two Her first free throw is up and good. I'm not sure the Tigers will play it this way, but the good news is if they do get beat and do need to foul, they do have four fouls before they are even in the bonus. Yeah, and they've played a really solid uh, half right here. Really disciplined, but still the defense hasn't lacked any. As you see there, another turnover, Addie Whiteley to Jenna Whiteley. She's going to pull it back out and try to kill some clock. Foul number 12, Brooklyn Housley, her third personal team foul number seven, Lady Tigers in the bonus. Addie Whiteley at the line for a one and one. Number three, Tori Brown, back in for the Lady Hornets. Interesting, it's a one-on-one -on -one and Hildell does not choose to put more people into the area. And yeah. it looked to bite them, but. Yeah, it almost did, just not able to pull it in. But yeah, that could have been catastrophic. Crosses and crosses back over. Going to give the ball back to the Lady Tigers. Man, really athletic play right there. Out of Barnowski, not able to uh, keep it in bounds though. Ball's gonna stay with the Tigers. Nine seconds remain. Inbound to Wiley, she's gonna pull it out and that should do it. And that's it. Lady Tigers bring home a win, 59-47 over the Cross River Rivals, the Hilldale Lady Hornets. Final thoughts on the game. They played well, they were able to shut down, um, maybe not shut down's not the word, but slow down number four for Hilldale. And uh, that was really the key to the game. Once they found the key to slowing her down, Hilldale's offense was slowed down and they could not in themselves um, find enough points. Yeah, it was good seeing the Tigers come out and be able to make shots. And that was really a complete team game. If I was forced to pick up the player of the game, I don't think I could. I mean, everybody had a huge impact. That was a part of this one. Uh, and we will be joining you shortly with the boys game. Uh, we'll be right back. Renfro Electric has been in business for over 35 years and is a full service electrical contractor for all of Oklahoma. We are able to serve our customers with superior craftsmanship and top notch service. With over 40 employees and a bonding capacity in excess of $6 million, we can handle those larger jobs but are still small enough to provide the personal service our customers have come to expect. 
For any electrical needs, give us a call at 918-687-7535. Keith Hardware and Supply has been located in Fort Gibson, Oklahoma since 1957. We strive to find solutions to your fix and offer a multitude of quality products and services such as steel chainsaws, Yeti coolers, Cub Cadet mowers, case knives, and big green egg grills. In early 2015, Keith Hardware remodeled and added hundreds of new items to better serve their customers. At Keith Hardware, we are proud supporters of all Fort Gibson school events. Go Tigers! Fort Gibson Education Foundation's desire is to help our students receive the best possible education our community can provide. We make every effort to be the highest quality educational system in the state. Donations equal opportunities, opportunities for students and teachers to be their best. An opportunity to build, design, and compete. An opportunity to create, design, and share. An opportunity to encourage, develop, and provide. An opportunity to travel, process, and gain real-world knowledge. An opportunity to honor, celebrate, and inspire. When you donate to our Fort Gibson Education Foundation, 100% of what you donate goes back into our classrooms for students and teachers so we can give them as many opportunities as possible. We are your Fort Gibson Education Foundation. Muskogee Powder Coating, doing projects big and small since 2010. Check us out on Facebook to see our work and give us a call at 918-681-4496. Creating remarkable reactions since 2011, Reaction Wraps has devotedly provided their customers with quality wraps, signs, banners, and other customized graphics. Located behind Fajita Ritas on South Scott Street, Reaction Wraps. If you're looking for some local entertainment, look no further than Green Country Lanes located on South York Street in Muskogee, a prime place for open bowling, birthday parties, and glow bowling. Come on out to Green Country Lanes where bowling is a sport for those who have talent to spare. Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory wish to personally invite you and your family to come tour the newest funeral home at the only crematory in Muskogee. Cornerstone welcomes the opportunity to answer any questions regarding planning and pre-arrangements for you and your loved ones. At Cornerstone, you'll find a helpful professional staff and beautiful surroundings. Come experience the difference at Cornerstone Funeral Home, 1830 North York, Muskogee, where you will find faces you know and reputations you trust. The Tiger's Den is located in downtown Fort Gibson. They have t-shirts, sweatshirts, jackets, hoodies, hats, and all kinds of tiger gear in sizes from children to adults. They do screen printing and embroidery too. Give them a call at 918-478-4873 or stop by 131 South Lee. Renfro Electric has been in business for over 35 years and is a full service electrical contractor for all of Oklahoma. We are able to serve our customers with superior craftsmanship and top-notch service. With over 40 employees and a bonding capacity in excess of $6 million, we can handle those larger jobs but are still small enough to provide the personal service our customers have come to expect. 
For any electrical needs, give us a call at 918-687-7535. Keith Hardware and Supply has been located in Fort Gibson, Oklahoma since 1957. We strive to find solutions to your fix and offer a multitude of quality products and services such as steel chainsaws, Yeti coolers, Cub Cadet mowers, case knives, and big green egg grills. In early 2015, Keith Hardware remodeled and added hundreds of new items to better serve their customers. At Keith Hardware, we are proud supporters of all Fort Gibson School events. Go Tigers! Fort Gibson Education Foundation's desire is to help our students receive the best possible education our community can provide. We make every effort to be the highest quality educational system in the state. Donations equal opportunities, opportunities for students and teachers to be their best. An opportunity to build, design, and compete. An opportunity to create, design, and share. An opportunity to encourage, develop, and provide. An opportunity to travel, process, and gain real-world knowledge. An opportunity to honor, celebrate, and inspire. When you donate to our Fort Gibson Education Foundation, 100% of what you donate goes back into our classrooms for students and teachers so we can give them as many opportunities as possible. We are your Fort Gibson Education Foundation. Muskogee Powder Coating, doing projects big and small since 2010. Check us out on Facebook to see our work and give us a call at 918-681-4496. Creating remarkable reactions since 2011, Reaction Wraps has devotedly provided their customers with quality wraps, signs, banners, and other customized graphics. Located behind Fajitaritas on South Scott Street, Reaction Wraps. If you're looking for some local entertainment, look no further than Green Country Lanes located on South York Street in Muskogee, a prime place for open bowling, birthday parties, and glow bowling. Come on out to Green Country Lanes where bowling is a sport for those who have talent to spare. Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory wish to personally invite you and your family to come tour the newest funeral home and the only crematory in Muskogee. Cornerstone welcomes the opportunity to answer any questions regarding planning and pre-arrangements for you and your loved ones. At Cornerstone, you'll find a helpful professional staff and beautiful surroundings. Come experience the difference at Cornerstone Funeral Home, 1830 North York, Muskogee, where you will find faces you know and reputations you trust. The Tiger's Den is located in downtown Fort Gibson. They have t-shirts, sweatshirts, jackets, hoodies, hats, and all kinds of tiger gear in sizes from children to adults. They do screen printing and embroidery, too. Give them a call at 918-478-4873 or stop by 131 South Lee. Renfro Electric has been in business for over 35 years and is a full-service electrical contractor for all of Oklahoma. We are able to serve our customers with superior craftsmanship and top-notch service. With over 40 employees and a bonding capacity in excess of $6 million, we can handle those larger jobs but are still small enough to provide the personal service our customers have come to expect. 
For any electrical needs, give us a call at 918 687 7535. Keith Hardware and Supply has been located in Fort Gibson, Oklahoma since 1957. We strive to find solutions to your fix and offer a multitude of quality products and services such as steel chainsaws, Yeti coolers, Cub Cadet mowers, case knives, and big green egg grills. In early 2015, Keith Hardware remodeled and added hundreds of new items to better serve their customers. At Keith Hardware, we are proud supporters of all Fort Gibson School events. Go Tigers! Fort Gibson Education Foundation's desire is to help our students receive the best possible education our community can provide. We make every effort to be the highest quality educational system in the state. Donations equal opportunities, opportunities for students and teachers to be their best. An opportunity to build, design, and compete. An opportunity to create, design, and share. An opportunity to encourage, develop, and provide. An opportunity to travel, process, and gain real-world knowledge. An opportunity to honor, celebrate, and inspire. When you donate to our Fort Gibson Education Foundation, 100% of what you donate goes back into our classrooms for students and teachers so we can give them as many opportunities as possible. We are your Fort Gibson Education Foundation. Muskogee Powder Coating, doing projects big and small since 2010. Check us out on Facebook to see our work and give us a call at 918-681-4496. Creating remarkable reactions since 2011, Reaction Wraps has devotedly provided their customers with quality wraps, signs, banners, and other customized graphics. Located behind Fajita Ritas on South Scott Street, Reaction Wraps.
Celtics down Ellen Smith and David Bridges. This is setting up to be a fun one. Two ranked teams in Class 4A. Pretty close we ranked together as well. Last time they met, it was a two-point contest. Yeah, and this place, like you said, it is filling out still. Looks like you got the Fort Gibson student section uh, standing, all standing, as well as the Hilldale student section, all at their feet. Man, this is going to be a fun one. And here's the tip. One by Fort Gibson. Blaine Scott brings it up the floor on the first possession. Briggs, his first shot up and good. Man, he has really developed that elbow jumper into a weapon. Fort Gibson comes out in a 3-2 zone. Interception, Seth Rowan. Gives it to Blunt in the corner. Hard, get there. Hard, go. Picks up his dribble, finds Briggs to help reset the offense. Touch pass to Graves. He goes out and gets it. Couple post moves is still going to be blocked. Wing or corner three up, no good. Offensive rebound will be there though. Briggs working down low, looking for the ball. Not going to get it, it's Scott instead. He works his way around the defense, finds a lane, drives. Going to be fouled. Yeah, it looked like he kind of got maybe hip check there. Yeah, just a little hip check, a little sly hip check. Inbound to Rowan. He gets it off quickly to Scott. Tigers really taking their time here, looking for the right shot. Each possession is going to be Hughes in this one. Blunt kind of fading to his left, not able to find that one. Ball bounces off a few. It's going to be Hornet ball going their way. Three, a little off balance. That one's going to be no good. Big rebound from Rowan. He's going to push the ball up the floor. Rifles a pass up court. Gets it right back, though. Scott gets a little too deep there. Going to end up stepping on the line. 2-2 Two -two ball game. Yeah, we just got to look for these teams to settle in. There's a lot of emotion coming into this game. Yeah, it's like a big-time boxing match right there. Nobody really wanting to give themselves up and get the first punch. I imagine when that first punch is thrown, it's going to be uh, the, the tempo will pick up. See a fast-paced, exciting ball game. Tough rebound there by Graves. Not the tallest guy on the floor, especially in the post but he was the highest that time. They find Briggs. He's two for two on the night. A great pass there by Graves, working on both ends of the court. Briggs got to be smart not to get into foul trouble. 
Yep. Especially I mean, the way he's been playing lately. He's got all four points tonight. Touch pass to Graves. Too far. It'll be a turnover. <laughs> Defense not going to be there. Open three. Trey, go for three. Gonna be a ref's timeout right there. I think uh it looks I think it was for taunting. Giving the kid a warning before he actually called the tech on it. Um, he kinda and I'm not sure it was actually in uh, Jaden's face, but when he was coming back down the court yeah. he kinda threw up three it's fingers. A low. It's a little low. Yeah. Ball's gonna stay with the Hornets here after that sh missed shot. They lead 7 to 4. Same team battling for the ball there. Deep three attempt. High rebound. Grace once again skies for it and gets the foul. Foul number 13, Logan Harper, his first team foul number two. Or I should say, gets fouled. Graves to Briggs. Briggs not going to find that one. Ball deep into the post. He goes up. Going to be a block. Going the way of the Tigers this time. Big block by Graves coming in from the back side. from the baseline. It's up and good. He's got that mid-range touch going right now. All six of the Tigers' points going to Ethan Briggs so far. Yeah, two jumpers and only one really in the paint. Out of his three shots. Looking for a stop here. Briggs does a good job there, but they're not able to find the re rebound. Hornets lead 9-6. Bladen Scott misses his first three attempt. Looks like that might be a foul on number 12, Rowan. Foul on number 12, Seth Rowan, his first team foul number two on the Tigers. Number zero, Connor Contra. Number 42, Jack Skur in for the Hornets. Deep three, as soon as he enters the game, that one's gonna be no good. Rowan with the rebound. Blunt, three of his own, ties the ball game up. Big shot there from Jackson Blunt with a minute 15 remaining in the first.
neither team really looking to trade jabs. They're, they're looking for haymakers and knockouts early. Not able to find the bottom of the net there. Ball will go the way of the Tigers. 50 seconds now remain in the first. Jackson pulls up again. Blunt, good for three. Back to back threes. He's feeling it. That's going to go the way of the Tigers. Tigers might have been a little bit fortunate there, but we'll take it. Somebody's living right. Graves gets the ball in the middle of the floor. He drives. Step back. Nothing there. Briggs gets it back to Blunt. 15 seconds left. Blunt to Scott. Nothing there. Blunt drives. Stops. Pops. Going to be blocked right there. High off the glass. No good. The Tigers will take the lead. 12 9 going into the second. I got a quick shout I need to make here. Uh, the Fort Gibson Tigers wrestling team are district champions. Uh, won all three duels tonight down in Poto by large margins. They're on their way back now. Make sure if you see one of those guys or Coach Johnson, Coach Dunham's or Coach Etchison, you give them a, a shout out, pat on the back. It's been a good year so far and they only look to continue that going into the playoffs. Uh, congratulations, uh, fellas, on that. That is big time. Winning district is always a great way to start off going into the postseason. Yeah, and I, winning's contagious, man. If one team does it, the other team starts doing it. You know, that can, that's good stuff. Fort Gibson Education Foundation's desire is to help our students receive the best possible education our community can provide. We make every effort to be the highest quality educational system in the state. Donations equal. Man, he's got half the Tigers points. Jackson Blunt's got the other half. Yeah, but it's pretty special when you got a kid like Weston Rouse being able to come off the bench. Uh, two talented big men. The smooth lefty. Uh, Going to look to make an impact here for the Tigers. Everybody else on the floor remains the same. The Hornets do have quite a bit of size out there. Yeah, at every position they are long and they are athletic. That is strolled by another athletic fella himself. That is Seth Rowan. Physical defense. Nothing called there. Going to be a travel. Blunt working to his left. Gets it to Graves deep. Graves turn around. Hasn't been there yet for him tonight. It's going to be blocked, but it's going to stay with the Tigers. Rouse, the big man. He's going to give his team a lift right there. Rouse. Going over. His right shoulder finishing with the left hand. Pushed the lead 16 to 9. Tigers. Good defense there by Scott. A good rebound by Rouse. During the quarter break, you could hear Coach Dickerson saying, block out, block out, block out. And that was yep. a big example of it there by Rouse. Yeah, and second chance shots, man. Hilldale's really built to take advantage of those. Uh, good rebounders all over the floor. Blunt 
Graves to Rouse. Rouse, smooth pass to Blunt. He will be fouled. sure what's going on. Uh, looks like some Jersey Tuck issues, I believe. Blunt's first attempt is good. Second one is up, and it is also good. Going with the big lineup with both 6'5 guys in the game. Yeah, this is one of Coach Dickerson's favorite lineups to run, kind of here midway through the second period. A lot of size, a lot of physicality coming out of the two big men uh, for the Tigers, and they do like to share the ball to each other also. Yeah, he saw uh, number 35 coming in for the Hornets, and uh, he thought he needed the change, get some more size in the game. Briggs daring uh, the Hornets to shoot there. They will not take the bait. A little lack of spacing there. Got two guys in one spot looking for the same pass. Three-point attempt, short, Blunt with the rebound. They both thought about it. They're thinking about it. How, how hot am I right now? Interesting call there. Looks like he just kind of yeah, had looked. one step back and gathered. If he was James Harden, it wouldn't have been called. Yeah, he could have. He's got at least two more out there before it's a travel. It, like number thirteen on Hillbill just made the same step. Yeah. Man, good tip right there out of Briggs. Rebound finally pulled down by Blunt. Briggs catches, stops, pops from the free throw line, and it's good again. Man, that mid-range jumper. Woo. Silky smooth out of the big fella. 20 to nine lead, 5.13 remaining in the second for the Tigers. We'll take a minute out of our time to thank our sponsors. This broadcast is brought to you by Keys Hardware and Supply, Renfro Electric, Fort Gibson Education Foundation, Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory, Green Country Lanes and Muskogee Skate Center, Muskogee Powder Coating, Tiger's Den, Reaction Wraps, Dr. Debbie Coy and Dr. Kimberly Duraset, The Learning Nest, New Direction Dental and Sleep Care, and Armstrong Bank. Thank you for all that you guys do for Tiger Athletics and Tiger Vision. Yeah, big time sponsors that we got, big time. Those are big shots hit out of Ethan Briggs with a lot of pressure there. You know, and he's the kind of kid, if you happen to be passing the gym late, late any night of the week, he will be up here putting those jumpers up. Yeah, with him, it, it's all been hard work. Fort Gibson's crowd's getting into Man. the game. Briggs gets down. Tiger defense going to work, not able to get the, the ball going their way just yet, but man, that's Scott and the defense collapses there and they're able to, I mean, they're flying around right now. A lot of energy in this uh, gym. And you know, the Tigers are playing with, it's not the bad kind of energy where it's making you make nervous mistakes. It's that good kind that ups your game uh, to the next level. And they're rolling with it right now. Deep three, no good. Long rebound, that's one that's gonna be tough. Ball stays with the red team. Just gets the ball across the floor. Drive. 
Goes up. Man, an awkward play right there. Just kind of goes the way of Hildale. And they're able to uh, earn the opportunity for a three-point play. That's big. That's his second personal. Kind of puts him in foul trouble. Yeah, and he's about to come out of it the is. game. It is. He's had a great game, but isn't it nice when you got guys like Rouse and Graves and, and Briggs all together that can play those post positions. Um, and they blend so well. Looks like the ball's a little sweaty. Coach Dickerson putting in the hard work there. Does a little bit of everything for this program. And here we go, see if that helps. It does not. Rouse with the big rebound. Blunt working hard to his right, spins back to his left. See, same jump stop there, nothing called that time that he was called for earlier. They feed the post to Rouse. Back out to Rowan. They leave him open. That's a mistake. That is Rowan, 4-3. They push the lead to 23-11, four minutes remaining in the half. Tigers go back to work on defense. Graves, active hands. Scott comes up with it. He's pushing down the floor. Waits for his help to get there. Pass a little low, but Graves is fighting for it. Ends up in the hands of Hildale. Good recovery, though, by Rowan. It's going to force his man out of bounds. Fun little sequence right there. Man, you've got the rowdy crowd getting into the game. It really seems like it's the roof's about to come off this place. Blunt back to work to his right. Finds Rowan. Graves to the middle. Touch pass to Rouse. What a beautiful look. Rouse not able to finish. Man, good look there out of Graves. That's a great call on the offensive end. Great defense there by Rowan as well to get back. Yeah, I think he tried to pull his hand back there and, and tried not to tip it. He saw that one was wide. Number 42, Jackson. Looks like he might have just, just tipped it right there. Three minutes now in the second. Tigers lead 23-11. Pass into the backcourt. Hildale takes over on offense now. Desperate need of a bucket on this possession. Need to start getting things rolling in the right direction for them. Scott, tough defense. Not able to find the rebound. It's still bouncing around back there. Blunt throws the brakes on. Tough shot, gonna be fouled though, gonna go to the line. That's really been their only offense lately. Yeah, Getting fouled and going to the line. But they're not there if we walk out and rebound. That's what Coach Dickerson has been uh, harping on a lot here in this second quarter. First free throw up, good. Second is up, and it's also good. Brings the lead back to 10. Three minutes remaining in the second. Blunt to his left. Get it back to him, trying to open up the right side of the floor. Being real methodical right here with the offense. Graves drives, gets a little deep. He whips it around the rouse. He goes up. Oh, misses the shot anyway. Thought we might be getting some free throws. They're going to call it on the floor. Looks like they're having a conversation. They're setting up for free throws. I thought he waved that off. Looks like I misread that one. Oh, it is. Okay. I think Ford Gibson was just going to wait until he got his free throw shot. 
Right, no. <laughs> Maybe that's the inbounds play. That's just kind of one of those plays in the game where, uh, kind of like in soccer, when the ball goes out, you grab it as quick as you can. If the rest doesn't know, you might yeah, call you, it your you way. You might get one. Ball goes out of bounds, you start pointing your way. Nobody knows. Just a little bit of gamesmanship. I'm here for all of it. Here we go back to work. Blunt in the corner. Good screen by Rowan. Man, what a shot, shot there from Blunt as he takes that one home. 26-13, two minutes now remaining. Just needs a half step. Yeah, I mean, what a great screen there by Rowan. Freeing him up just enough. Blunt's coming off the MVP performance from the Old Fort Classic, and he has not slowed down. Right. Another jump stop walk call. Looks like we have a player who did not uh, wait for officials instruction to be subbed in. They're going to let him stay. Twenty six thirteen here. Tigers lead. Active fans there. Graves just wanted that one more. Blunt, deep, three, high arcing off the left side, no good. Good defense by Rowan, shutting down the post moves. Minute now remaining in the game. Soft touch off the glass, not going to be there. Batted out to Graves. Good defensive possession out of the Tigers. Rowan, quick trigger, up, rattles around, good. Getting that shooter's roll. Yeah, the rim has been pretty friendly tonight. I guess the call was fouled before the walk. Yeah, it looks so, I mean, that one, you hate to see it. looks like the Hornet player was out of control, and Rouse just kind of happened to be in his way as he's, you know, you know how it goes. You guys saw it. <laughs> Quick passes, corner three, up, no good. Tiger ball going the other way. 30 seconds left in the half. You'd expect them to hold for the final shot here. Yeah, I believe they will. 20 seconds left. You know, not saying you're content, but you're happy with where the lead is at this point. Just to add on, man, that'd be a big bonus going into the half. Blunt gets deep. High off the glass, no good. It finds Rouse. The smooth lefty puts it in. Seven seconds remaining in the game. Hilldale's going to have to go fast. They want to get a shot up. They will get one last look. Minute or a second. Point eight left in the half. It's going to be a Derek Fisher type look here. Yeah, they got one dribble and, may it and a shot. That's really all the time they have. No foul. One dribble, one shot up. No good. Big lead for the Tigers going into the half. 31-13, keys to the first half. Uh, Tigers playing great defensively, uh, not allowing them to get open looks. That has really been the key. Um, every look from Hilda was contested heavily by the Tigers. Yeah. You know, encouraging to, not a perfect half for the Tigers, so they still have room to grow in this game. Uh, we will pick this right back up after halftime. Tigers lead 31-13.
Renfro Electric has been in business for over 35 years and is a full service electrical contractor for all of Oklahoma. We are able to serve our customers with superior craftsmanship and top notch service. With over 40 employees and a bonding capacity in excess of $6 million, we can handle those larger jobs but are still small enough to provide the personal service our customers have come to expect. For any electrical needs, give us a call at 918-687-7535. Keith Hardware and Supply has been located in Fort Gibson, Oklahoma since 1957. We strive to find solutions to your fix and offer a multitude of quality products and services such as steel chainsaws, Yeti coolers, Cub Cadet mowers, case knives, and big green egg grills. In early 2015, Keith Hardware remodeled and added hundreds of new items to better serve their customers. At Keith Hardware, we are proud supporters of all Fort Gibson school events. Go Tigers! Fort Gibson Education Foundation's desire is to help our students receive the best possible education our community can provide. We make every effort to be the highest quality educational system in the state. Donations equal opportunities, opportunities for students and teachers to be their best. An opportunity to build, design, and compete. An opportunity to create, design, and share. An opportunity to encourage, develop, and provide. An opportunity to travel, process, and gain real-world knowledge. An opportunity to honor, celebrate, and inspire. When you donate to our Fort Gibson Education Foundation, 100% of what you donate goes back into our classrooms for students and teachers so we can give them as many opportunities as possible. We are your Fort Gibson Education Foundation. Muskogee Powder Coating, doing projects big and small since 2010. Check us out on Facebook to see our work and give us a call at 918-681-4496. Creating remarkable reactions since 2011, Reaction Wraps has devotedly provided their customers with quality wraps, signs, banners, and other customized graphics. Located behind Fajitaritas on South Scott Street, Reaction Wraps. If you're looking for some local entertainment, look no further than Green Country Lanes located on South York Street in Muskogee, a prime place for open bowling, birthday parties, and glow bowling. Come on out to Green Country Lanes where bowling is a sport for those who have talent to spare. Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory wish to personally invite you and your family to come tour the newest funeral home and the only crematory in Muskogee. Cornerstone welcomes the opportunity to answer any questions regarding planning and pre-arrangements for you and your loved ones. At Cornerstone, you'll find a helpful professional staff and beautiful surroundings. Come experience the difference at Cornerstone Funeral Home, 1830 North York, Muskogee, where you will find faces you know and reputations you trust. The Tiger's Den is located in downtown Fort Gibson. They have t-shirts, sweatshirts, jackets, hoodies, hats, and all kinds of tiger gear in sizes from children to adults. They do screen printing and embroidery too. Give them a call at 918-478-4873 or stop by 131 South Lee. 
Renfro Electric has been in business for over 35 years and is a full service electrical contractor for all of Oklahoma. We are able to serve our customers with superior craftsmanship and top notch service. With over 40 employees and a bonding capacity in excess of $6 million, we can handle those larger jobs but are still small enough to provide the personal service our customers have come to expect. For any electrical needs, give us a call at 918 687 7535. Keith Hardware and Supply has been located in Fort Gibson, Oklahoma since 1957. We strive to find solutions to your fix and offer a multitude of quality products and services such as steel chainsaws, Yeti coolers, Cub Cadet mowers, case knives, and big green egg grills. In early 2015, Keith Hardware remodeled and added hundreds of new items to better serve their customers. At Keith Hardware, we are proud supporters of all Fort Gibson school events. Go Tigers! Fort Gibson Education Foundation's desire is to help our students receive the best possible education our community can provide. We make every effort to be the highest quality educational system in the state. Donations equal opportunities, opportunities for students and teachers to be their best. An opportunity to build, design, and compete. An opportunity to create, design, and share. An opportunity to encourage, develop, and provide. An opportunity to travel, process, and gain real-world knowledge. An opportunity to honor, celebrate, and inspire. When you donate to our Fort Gibson Education Foundation, 100% of what you donate goes back into our classrooms for students and teachers so we can give them as many opportunities as possible. We are your Fort Gibson Education Foundation. Muskogee Powder Coating, doing projects big and small since 2010. Check us out on Facebook to see our work and give us a call at 918-681-4496. Creating remarkable reactions since 2011, Reaction Wraps has devotedly provided their customers with quality wraps, signs, banners, and other customized graphics. Located behind Fajitaritas on South Scott Street, Reaction Wraps. If you're looking for some local entertainment, look no further than Green Country Lanes located on South York Street in Muskogee, a prime place for open bowling, birthday parties, and glow bowling. Come on out to Green Country Lanes where bowling is a sport for those who have talent to spare. Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory wish to personally invite you and your family to come tour the newest funeral home and the only crematory in Muskogee. Cornerstone welcomes the opportunity to answer any questions regarding planning and pre-arrangements for you and your loved ones. At Cornerstone, you'll find a helpful professional staff and beautiful surroundings. Come experience the difference at Cornerstone Funeral Home, 1830 North York, Muskogee, where you will find faces you know and reputations you trust.
Welcome back here to Harrison Fieldhouse for the second half of the Fort Gibson Tigers and the Hildale Hornets. What are, what are your keys to finishing out this game for the Tigers? Man, I want the Tigers to come out right now and put the throttle down, keep up the pace, play great defense, um, and get into their offensive looks. Uh, man, their defense was suffocating right there. Uh, one place they can improve, pulling in a few more rebounds and giving up less second chance opportunities. And I think they'll have a favorable outcome. Um, great first half start for them. Yeah, you held a really good uh, Hildell team here to 13 points and a half. So, uh, really strong start for the Tigers defensively. Look to continue that here in the second half. Yeah, it's hard to ask for much more. Like, it, I mean, it could have been a few less without the, you know, a couple second chance opportunities. I mean, that's really it. Um, and just to keep that going. You know, sometimes it's tough to play with that level of intensity um, and focus for a full game. Um, but the Tigers have looked locked in from the tip. And there's Graves, big move. A little too hard off the back iron. Yeah, and you would the Hornets. You wouldn't really expect the Tigers to hold them to 13 points in the second half. Just continue to play discipline defense, and you got to get the rebounds. Yeah, long rebound there, like we said, has been missed. Gives another three-point opportunity. That one's no good either. Graves finds that one. Rowan, three, up, good. Yeah. Nothing but net there for Rowan. 34-13, seven minutes left in the third. That's trouble. Blunt takes his time, headed up the floor here. Drives, stops, pops, step back. Off the front iron, no good. Warner three, that one's in. First three in a while for the Hornets. And a good feel for the behind the back, no look pass there to keep the possession alive for the Hornets and then they go to work. Gonna be a travel though. Hildo fans not happy with that call. Surprising. <laughs> Rowan Licks, Briggs in the corner, finds Graves. He goes to his right, up. Tough bucket, Graves. Going to have the and one opportunity coming up. And he did a great job getting underneath the rim there to eliminate the block. Yeah, a lot of, I mean, it's just feel, man. Feel and instinct right there going up for that. Lead is now pushed to 20. Now 21. Shady Graves. Hildell gets inside. Blocked by Briggs. Blocked by Briggs. The third opportunity is finally there. Got to get a rebound there. Yeah, that does kind of put him out of position. Briggs going up for the block. Somebody else is going to have to fly in and, and pull the board down. Briggs going to be hitting the back there. Dead ball foul. Briggs is going to be ran through like he set a screen, but he was not. Blunt to his left. Crossover. Three. Graves is there. He goes up and he is fouled. Like I said earlier, that instinct man, he is playing with the nose for the ball. He's been in the right position. Start at this second half more times than not. Now's number 13, Logan Harper, his third personal team foul number three. Jaden Graves at the line for two. Jaden's just one of those kids that has the heart and the hustle on the field, always giving his 110%. Leaves that one a little short. Back 
Captain of the Hornets, number 35, Ryland Neal. That one's up and good. Entry pass, Briggs on D. Gets big, gets the rebound too. Blunt, oop, Rowan, good. Woo. That's just a pretty Woo. play. Good vision there by Rowan, great cut, or good vision by Blunt, get great cut by Rowan. Yeah, and they were on the same page right there. May not have been a dunk, but maybe even a little smoother. Ball's bouncing around, nobody's able to bring it home. Nail does. Off the front, rim, no good. Rowan pushes the pace. Goes to the rim, fouled. So they're struggling to keep up with the speed of the game at the moment. Yeah, and they are, I mean, it just kind of feels like they're settling for some shots right now, and they got to find the easy bucket. They're kind of struggling from three. Uh, settling for tough shots in the lane. Might have to work it even though you're down. It's better than a uh, long rebound turnover. And that one's good. Second one's up and good as well. Scott, steal to Rowan. He turns the corner. Woo. Gets it to Blunt on the wing. Swings it back to Briggs. I wonder if Briggs thought he had the hot hand for a second, wanted to pull up from three, maybe just a little outside his range. I feel like uh, Scott Coach will pull Dickerson. up, though. Yep. Woo! Woo! Sorry to interrupt. That <laughs> yeah, was... No, no. Big that's, time. That's an interruptible moment. Come on, Blaine. We're talking. 45 18, your Tigers lead. 351 left in the third. Timeout, Hornets. And we'll take a moment to um, thank our sponsors. This broadcast is brought to you by Keys Hardware and Supply, Renfro Electric, Fort Gibson Education Foundation, Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory, Green Country Lanes and Muskogee Skate Center, Muskogee Powder Coating, Tiger's Den, Reaction Wraps, Dr. Debbie Coy and Dr. Kimberly Duraset, The Learning Nest, New Direction Dental and Sleep Care, and Armstrong Bank. Thank you guys for all that you do. Man, what a start. Yeah, this is uh, the start they needed to be able to continue on the path that they were on in the first half. Yeah, and they're really, I mean, it looks like the team is just building off each other. You got people throwing oops, shooting deep threes. It's just, uh, I see what you're doing. Maybe I can do a little bit better. And they just keep one up each other right now. They're going to have to keep that intensity and focus going on, though. Uh, make sure they finish this game out. Got the classic Sweet Caroline on the... Loudspeaker. A lot of bump, bump, bumps from the Fort Gibson side there. I feel like I was at a Red Sox game in the seventh inning. Three point attempt, high arcing shot. That one's good. Jack's third with three. to his right, backs it off, finds Blunt. Graves, elbow, nothing there. Briggs is there to help. Seth, backdoor cut, Blunt finds him, man. 
Good setup right there. 47-21, Tigers. Two thirty-six in the third, forty-seven twenty-three. That seemed like an interesting timeout. Yeah, just trying to get everything across the T's, dot the eyes. Seems like every time Hildo even gets a little bit of momentum, just like the girls' game, yep. before Gibson responds. Yeah, look for that right here. Um, Coach Dickerson getting the boys uh, back on track, keeping the intensity, keeping the focus. We're going to have Weston Rouse check in here now for the Tigers. That's where the Tigers need to be careful. That's the way Hildo wants to get back in this game, yeah, forcing some turnovers. Yeah, quick points. That's going to be the, their way back into it. They just got to take care of the ball, make the Hornets work. There's Weston Rouse with the right hand that time. It's a big deal. Deep three, no hesitation. Maybe over back foul. Ball slamming going on on the Hornets side. A little frustration starting to show here. 49-23, Tigers lead. It's one of those things that you get the right ref, you might might get a, get teed up for that. Looks like Hildell's going to a 1-3-1. A lot of contact there, no call. Yeah, he's looking for the foul. That was, that was kind of funny. This drive, not able to get it. Tigers back on D. Another three attempt, no hesitation. The big fella will let it fly. Blood oh, by blood. blood. He's gonna push the pace up a little bit. Got on the fast break. He goes up, rattles it home. What a transition play there from Blunt. The ball's back with the Tigers. Seth throw in. I Ooh, didn't even see, didn't even what, see what, what happened. happened. That was too quick. Instant replay, Tiger Vision. Do we have it? <laughs> no, I'm being told we are not having it. Jackson Blunt, though. That would have brought the that roof off this place. <laughs> you, could, you could hear people just, huh. I mean, they're living and dying with every play. Not sure what the call is. We'll get it in just a second. Looks like 21. Yep. Push on Blaine Scott. Three-point attempt again. This one, no good. Rowan, he'll take a three of his own. This one's long. Maybe a little fired up. Got into that one a little too much. Yeah. Active hands make it tough on the drive. Good finish. 50 seconds remaining in the third. Tigers up 51-25. One to his right, flying Scott. He's going to get trapped. Gets out of it, gives it to Blunt. Blunt going to slow it down. Scott not able to split. Quick three, no good. Pushes it to Grace, back to Rowan. Corner three, up, no good there. Heave is gonna be about four seconds too early. early. Yeah, that was, that about, was awkward heave. Yeah, we're just gonna move on. Uh, yep. We're going into the fourth, Tigers lead 51-25. 
We'll be right back. Creating remarkable reactions since 2011, Reaction Wraps has devotedly provided their customers with quality wraps, signs, banners, and other customized graphics. Located behind Fajitaritas on South Scott Street, Reaction Wraps. Muskogee Powder Coating, doing projects big and small since 2010. Check us out on Facebook to see our work and give us a call at 918-681-4496. Renfro Electric has been in business for over 35 years and is a full service electrical contractor for all of Oklahoma. We are able to serve our customers with superior craftsmanship and top notch service. With over 40 employees and a bonding capacity in excess of $6 million, we can handle those larger jobs but are still small enough to provide the personal service our customers have come to expect. For any electrical needs, give us a call at 918-687-7535. And here we go. Start of the fourth, Tigers lead 51-25. We got eight minutes remaining in this basketball game. Hornets are going to start with possession here. Active hands, that's going to be a turnover going Fort Gibson's way. Looks like they're going full court press. Yeah, they're going to have to empty the tank right here to get back into this one. Not a lot of time. Rowan. To his right, finds Graves. He's going to slow it down. Oh, Graves with the crossover is going to lose the handle there. Lux out there, going to keep possession. Tough inbound incoming, though. Rouse doing a little ball handling of his own on the top of the key. Inbound, dumps it off to Graves. Nothing there right now, but the Tigers, you got to believe, are fine with holding the ball for a little bit. Yeah. They, 26-point uh, lead, they don't really want to rush anything, and they haven't had an open look yet, so. Yeah, as long as you keep the passes crisp. You're doing fine. One drives baseline is going to flip the floor. I'm sure at the quarter break, Coach Dickerson said, if it's not there, don't take it. There's a look. Rouse up, and it's good. Yes. There it was. I mean, yes. They found the pass, found the position, and they got their bucket. And a minute and a half off the clock already here. Which in the may court. be more important. Corner three up, no good. It's a good rebound there. What a pass. And they bring it back out. Rouse a smooth left. He leaves that one a little short. Stop pop off the side of the backboard there. Ross to Graves. Graves able to split the defense. He goes up and in. That's the goal team. Or a foul. Oh, it's going to be a foul. Couple and ones for Jaden Graves tonight. Jaden's great at just finishing through contact. Jaden Graves at the line for the three point play. The 25, Mike Santos. Entering the game now, number 23 for the Tigers, Hunter Branch. Number 23, Hunter Branch. Jackson Blunt getting a well-deserved rest. Tigers up 30 with six minutes left in the game. Free throws good for Gray.
Got it. Technical on Jaden Gray. What? Technical foul there on Jaden Gray. He's not quite sure what happened. Technical foul charge number one, Ty O'Neill. The double take yeah, must on. Have, you know, must that, have been a scuffle. Yeah, or that kind of clears it up. Maybe a little jawing going on. The other two refs even seem confused on. Yeah. What is the call? At the line for your Tigers, number 12, Seth Rowan. <laughs> Rowan makes the first take with the free throw. And for your Tigers, number 24, Xavier Shepard. Check it in, number 24, Xavier Shepard for the Tigers. Leaves that one short. In for your Tigers, number 11, Jackson Glassby. So, Jackson looks like Jaden Graves didn't get a tech. Otherwise, Hilda yeah. would have shot the ball. So, maybe it was a missed call on, missed first call. Yeah, cause I'm just going to move on, I think. Yep. Didn't happen. I'm still. I can't move on. I'm confused. But we're back in action anyways. Rowan taking over uh, control of the Tiger offense with Blunt on the bench. He's good. Number 42, Jack Spur back into the Hornets. Tigers lead 57 to 25. Tigers look 5 like 14 left in the game. Tigers look like they're switching up their defense, going to a two-on-two -two zone. Hildell. Full Hildell. timeout, Hildell. Timeout, Hildell here. Looks like Tiger's gonna start clearing out the bench. As Carl Garrett gets to check in. Oh, Big Carl, that's what we call him. Big Carl. This is always one of the funnest parts of the game, dueling cheerleaders when they're doing the backflips down the field or yeah. down the court. Yeah, and they're getting after it too. Looks like you also have Jackson Glassby checking into the game. Three's no good. Carl Garrett rebound. It's a big Carl. Branch to Shepard. Shepard goes to Carl. Carl up, no good. Shepard. Looks for the offensive rebound, doesn't, not able to find it. They're going to have to get back on D quickly. That was a good pass there by Shepard, though. Yeah, and Carl almost had the finish. Three-point attempt. That one's good. Glassby surveys the floor. Went to his right, gets the ball to Glasby. Beats Carl Garrett in the post. Good ball movement so far. Tigers again not settling for a bad shot, wanting to find a maybe a layup, easy open mid range jumper. They keep turning over their offense. Yep, just keep looking for looking for it. Good feed, post to post there. Shepard fakes up, good. Big bucket there out of Xavier Shepard right there. 
Great pass on the other end from Carl Garrett. Big Carl. Hilldale answers with a quick three. Gonna try and limit those. Looks like even though the score is 59-31. Cooper Wicks about to check in the game for the Tigers as well. Tigers lead by 28. Branch, corner, three, up. Rattles, no good. Long pass, foot race. Hilldale's, that's gotta be something. Looks like we might have missed it there. Deep three, up, no good. Xavion Shepard rebound. Tigers take control once again. Three minutes left in the ball game. Shepard post, turnaround jumper. Carl Garrett goes up. Gonna get called for the foul there. Pass number 20, Carl Garrett, his first team foul number three. Checking in for your Tigers, number 25, Cooper Wicks. And Wicks checks in for Rowan. Man, what a game Seth Rowan had tonight. Hitting threes, pushing the pace, been playing great defense, man. X Factor. Yeah, he may not always show up in the score sheet, but he definitely changes games with the speed and his defensive abilities. Man, and, and you just watch him out there. He just looks like an old pro. Looks like he's been doing it for a while, which he has. Oh, Garrett drives, loses the handle. Another unit of subs coming into the game. Hazen, Adair, Thornbrew, and Crawley. Tiger lead 59-31, 2-12 left in the ball game. That three's good. Crawley to his left, crossover. Finds Adair. He's looking for the open look. Long pass there is going to be no good. Three, no good. Rebound long. Adair picks it up. Brings the ball cross court. He pulls up. Wicks, deep three. That's no good. He gets his own rebound. Crawley. Elbow jumper. No good. I think we missed a double dribble there. Missed right. or allowed? Allowed, uh, yeah. <laughs> Might be that point in I the game. I haven't seen these guys miss a travel call all night, much <laughs> less. I mean, it's whew, touchy. Eight air, corner three, up. No good. Need a foul there on Wicks. Wicks is first team foul number four on the Tigers. 38 remaining in this ball game. Hazen comes up with it. He's in the triple threat, nobody's around him. The crowds really did come in this game. Nice to see four gifts and Bang! Oh. Yeah, it was, man, and they're still here. I thought that one might have been allowed also. It was not. Yeah, that, it's all right. Nine seconds, we'll take, I mean, foul trouble maybe. We're just not gonna talk about it. <laughs> Moving on. Taking a chance to get the shots up here at the end of the ball game. 
Tigers gonna take this one home. 62-37, big win here That's in Fort Gibson. Man, they just started out hot and finished hot. Yeah. Not, I mean, man, not, much, not too much to say. They came out to play today. Um, starting to build their postseason run. Final thoughts. Uh, this is this is right where you want to be, hitting your best basketball at towards the end of the season. So this is a, a great win for the Tigers over a ranked Tildale team who has a lot of talent and a lot of size. So it's a lot of lot of positives coming out of this game. Yep, thank you guys for joining us here on Tiger Vision. We will see you next time.